Okay, welcome to the news. We have a big episode today with even more changes to Delve and Zekvir's Lair. Tons of class additions and updates. Brand new updates also on the PTR. More 11.0.5 news, data mines, so much more. My name's Sky from the Comeback Kids. We got your World of Warcraft news today. Grab a cup of coffee, sit down. We got a lot to discuss. Okay, starting off with everybody's favorite solo content, we're once again getting some changes to Delves. And by Delves, we actually mean to Zekthir's challenge. Now, I think this is a little bit warranted. You know how hard it actually is. Of course, there are people early on in the expansion who kind of cheese mechanics by using brand to get it done, you know, before all the bug fixes and stuff. But as it stands right now, this boss would absolutely kick people's butt, including mine. Well, it looks like Blizzard actually did something about it, and they did some tuning with nerfs to his health, damage, and the ads that he spawns during the fight. Blizzard officially put out a post yesterday with hot fixes that officially have gone live on Realms, so get a load of this. They stated they adjusted the difficulty of the Zekvir challenge, with the damage and health of both difficulties being reduced, the hatch time for his web hatchlings being increased, the cast time for multiple abilities being increased, the spawn locations of the web terrors, and more. Immediately after this, many players out there actually went on over to Zekfir's Lair, and yes, it may be a little bit easier, but it still doesn't mean it's a walk in the park. Difficulty level one, which is just the single question mark option, honestly, is very, very easy and can get you the achievement, and you know, I banged it out on my very first try on a rogue. Now, difficulty level two, however, left me pretty frustrated after trying for a couple hours, and I still couldn't get him past like 40-ish percent. I think this is something that is actually going to be very challenging for a good amount of people and you know for a long time during the season and honestly I'm personally all for it I don't think this is something that should be banged out easy within the first couple weeks and I don't think it's something that needs to be completed by everybody out there and I I think it should be rare to see someone who's actually gotten the tier 2 question mark difficulty completed you got to know difficulty level 2 is absolutely doable by every class you know considering the fact that you kind of do have to play perfectly throughout the fight and if I'm almost getting him down like on my rogue I feel like every other class in the game should be able to get him down let me know what you think about it overall love the challenge love the solo delve experience so far when it comes to the raid this week we also got changes to normal heroic and mythic neurobar palace earlier this week for normal they made some changes with damage reduction across the board getting reduced for group sizes that are smaller as well as increasing the cast time on abilities on the silken court fight additionally when it comes to heroic silken court it's now confirmed that you will only need one set of people for binding webs to stop the boss on heroic rather than previously it being at two this right here is a massive change that's probably gonna you know save a lot of groups in the future to be honest including my own and then lastly as the mythic racer world first is still currently going on they've been pulling queen and Sarek for a little over like two and a half days now uh, to the point where it's finally getting nerfed with there being damage reduction on Acolyte's Essence by 12.5%, as well as Royal Condemnation uh, being reduced by about 8% during Phase 3. But those are all the raid changes. Let's now move on to some of the other news. We even got some additional bug fixes toward Preservation Evoker that might have led to them dealing a little bit more healing than they previously should have. This update is going to come on the weekly reset on Tuesday as well, with a bug causing Consume Flame to gain double benefit from versatility for some reason, and an issue where Consume Flame was gaining more benefit than intended from a tune to the dream. Now, this shouldn't be anything too significant, considering the fact that a lot of people are using Chrono Warden on Preservation as well, and they're not really using Flame Shaper too much. Uh, however, though, using Flame Shaper in Ray did lead to some really really crazy numbers coming out like you're seeing on screen here nevertheless though we all know that preservation evoker is just dominating across the board whether it be for mythic plus or raid so i guess we'll have to see how this affects them come tuesday uh speaking of changes it also looks like patron work orders are getting some nice adjustments so you crafters out there definitely gotta listen up as of just the other day blizzard has drastically improved the patron work order system increasing the odds patrons will provide reagents so it can lower the cost of you crafting something and then removing some of the more expensive to craft items from the list of possible items that can be commissioned so pretty much in a very simple way to understand 
What this means is that they're removing the very expensive patron orders to fill, for example, like the cauldrons for alchemists, the dark moon sigil tier threes for inscription, and some of the other hard to craft toys from like engineering and so on and so forth. And they're replacing those hard ones with much easier orders to fill while giving you more reagents provided by the patrons. So it's going to be way less gold and they provide you with materials. So if you've been taking advantage of patron orders like you should be doing to make a bunch of gold and increase your skill, you'll know that some of these recipes were very hard to fulfill and they just weren't worth it. In some cases, it can cost you like 10 to 15,000 gold to fill a patron order for like one or two skill points. And it was just, it was awful. So them making these changes, very, very big W, more reagents provided, easier recipes to fulfill equals out, you know, more artisan's acuity as well as skill points for everybody. So everyone's happy. So big W on those. Additionally, now that we are a few weeks into the season, the Arena World Championship has now arrived. So starting today, as well as the next couple of days in September, the cup number one is going to be active. And here is the following schedules of cups two through four. Now, listen, I don't know about you all, but I like watching the arena gameplay because I'm going to be honest, I'm not the greatest PvP player out there, but I like to dabble. So, you know, watching these players perform at the highest level possible and, you know, do all these crazy things and make all these crazy plays. It's really, really entertaining to me personally. So if you're looking for something to watch over the weekend while, you know, you're just chilling out, playing some WoW or, you know, goofing off, uh, this could definitely be an option for you. So pull it up. I'm sure you'll be entertained on the second tab. Uh, now, moving forward a little bit toward the 20th anniversary coming out next month and onward, this week, we got even more updates, which include clash changes, nerf to the Drakthir race if you aren't an evoker as well, and a couple other things. Starting off with the nerf to Drakthir, it states that Drakthir who have strayed away from evoker magic now have a reduced movement boost when pressing glide. Everybody knows that a big part of playing demon hunter or evoker is the fact that you can do that whole double jump like uh, glide thing to get a nice little movement speed boost compared to some of the other races out there that just simply have the walk. So when they announced Drakthir, it was kind of a big deal to a lot of people. Some of these classes that are very immobile, like Warlock, could potentially have that in their back pocket. And now this is actually going to get changed. Now, we aren't sure how much of a nerf this is actually going to be, so we're going to have to keep you all updated on this soon. Uh, whether it's going to just be gutted or it might just be like half as good, we're going to have to see. Moving on also to some of the class changes, starting off with Druid. They got some changes around their arcane spells to allow them, you know, to have some additional spell effects uh, to some of their other talents, so there's nothing too crazy here. Moving on to Hunter Hero Talents, though, once again, we're seeing massive, massive changes to the Dark Ranger Hero Talent Tree, which huge damage increases to the Bleak Powder Talent and the Shadow Surge Talent, but reducing the damage of Black Arrows. So this should lower the damage of the single target. Uh, you know, this spec can put out by a little bit, but vastly increase the AoE explosions uh, you get from the Talent Tree from both these abilities, which were added in 11.0.5. I'm going to be honest. Listen, every day that goes by, we get some very big anniversary notes about Dark Ranger and how they're changing and updating things and buffing them, whatever. And it's making it a lot more enticing for players out there if you're a hunter and you would like to give this spec a try. Uh, so absolutely be excited if you're a hunter main out there. Additionally, Beast Mastery is getting some buffs as well, which is crazy considering how good they're doing in a raiding environment with Kill Command being increased by 20% and multi-shot damage increased by a whopping 300%. For Marksmanship Hunter, they made changes to their four set bonus, which should help smooth things out a little bit, getting that ramped up. And then some minor gameplay changes to survival with Fury of the Eagle and Merciless Blow. Once again, Blizzard's favorite love child, Mage, is getting some changes also with Gravity Lapse now stunning enemies if you are Arcane and using Sun Fury and some slight nerfs to Spell Slinger for Arcane. Not only that, Frost Spellslinger got some slight nerfs as well. Listen, a very big W overall is also Protection Paladins are now getting some buffs. So listen up for this one. The base armor of a prop pally is increased by 10%, which is nice. And the cooldown of your Blessed Hammer, Judgment, and Hammer of the Righteous is being reduced by 10% as well. Not only that, from Shield of the Righteousness, you're also going to be getting an additional 10% armor increase from that also. So they're getting like a 20% armor increase if you got that Shield of Righteousness active, which should be pretty damn good for their natural damage mitigation for protection paladin so hopefully they keep going with that not only that the eye of tear gets a cooldown reduction which should allow you to use it like every pull or so inside mythic plus so that's a big w also overall loving these changes for pop pally honestly they need it i say keep it coming uh with the shamans once again we're getting massive changes it seems like this patch is all about them with the first one being brand new models and updates to the ascendance ability this was one of their biggest things coming for shamans next patch and as you can see on screen they added two 
two glyphs to where you can choose the traditional ascendance form like we have today or the energetic ascendance form that you see on screen here. So now for ascendance, you have three different options that you can use. I'm going to be honest. I love the brand new ascendance model. I think it is amazing. Listen, I didn't mind the other one with the long hair flowing up. It kind of looked like Bwam Sandi a little bit, uh, but I think this one right now I'm going to be honest, it is 10 times better than before. Major, major W, making me want to gear up my Elemental Shaman at this point because this looks really, really nice. Uh, you guys got to let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. Uh, also, continuing with some class changes, Elemental Shaman's getting some damage increase. The Lava Burst, uh, their new talent, Erupting Lava, is getting a damage increase as well that, like, rocks the damage on your flame shock when you hit them with the lava burst which is nice and then they're also getting some other adjustments uh when it comes to enhancement they're fixing some slight issues with ascendance and its chance to trigger with uh deeply rooted elements and stuff as well as some gameplay interactions with primordial wave which should smooth out some stuff another big change that a lot of warrior players out there are probably not gonna like is the fact that thunderous roar and odin's fury are now going to be dealing reduced damage beyond five targets listen everybody knows that fury and arms warriors aoe damage is absolutely nuts so far this expansion but to be honest that's kind of like all they have warriors don't really have utility they don't really bring a lot for the group other than that so them you know dealing really high damage is kind of their niche uh, I think them reducing this is going to affect the class a little bit in terms of like, you know, Mythic Plus with massive poles and, and you know, some raid fights like Brew Twister. So you Warrior Mains, you got to let me know what you think about this in the comment section below because personally, once again, I think Warriors dealing incredible damage is kind of like their whole gimmick since they don't bring a lot to the raid. But yes, okay, with the next month a couple days away being October, that means the trading post is almost here. We actually got a little bit of a sneak peek of this uh, as well, whether you walk in the light or embrace the dark or shadows out there. There's something for everybody during the October trading post. You have this Death Stalker. You have this Depth Stalker mount, which is kind of like a jellyfish covered in like metallic armor. You have this walking skull hand mount that looks like something you can get from Shadowlands. Uh, this really awesome Harvest Golem uh, transmog that really pumps out the Halloween theme a little bit, as well as this Swift Chevra mount, similar to how they gave players back in the day for Recruit a Friend, which I really, really think is awesome. Now, listen, if I am being completely honest here, I don't love most of these cosmetic options so you guys gotta let me know what your thoughts uh i do think last month was a lot better and i do think the leaks we got from december really hone in on that holiday theme so i don't know i thought it would be a lot better i thought they would give something more like halloween-ish and more cosmetics like that rather than just like one harvest golem set for example you have the four horsemen armor that was really really cool i thought that'd be a great opportunity to add to the game but Additionally, what about some like jack-o'-lantern type theme transmogs or something? I don't know. I feel like they missed a mark a little bit when it comes to like Halloween and October stuff like that. Moving on now to our discussion type topics rather than news. The first one is actually very important and I've got to hear all of your opinions on this because it's a very big topic in the community. What do you personally think about the Mythic Plus experience so far in season one of The War Within? We're going to be going through all these comments and breaking them down in our next news video. So I'm going to be honest here. From a lot of people that I've spoken to, whether it be guildmates, friends, uh, or even, you know, seeing other viewpoints on the forums, a lot of people seem to be having a toxic experience so far in the War Within launch, whether it be players rage quitting or intentionally kicking somebody out of the group or not knowing certain things, uh, you know, when they're queuing up. Listen, I'm going to be honest, after playing Mythic Plus extensively over the last like week and a half-ish or so, uh, this issue tends to come up when you're on the lower side of keys, I've realized rather than higher end. And the example of that is pretty much Mythic Keys level one through about five or six. The point I'm trying to make here is that the lower keys that you attend that are meant to be a lot easier and a lot more straightforward and doable seem to be flooded with players who are toxic and not too great to play with or just simply not too friendly. It's almost like one of those epidemics where, you know, you're stuck in like Mythic Plus score hell, you know, you kind of like League of Legends does, you know, the most toxic player base you can find is the lower, lower brackets like bronze or silver or something like that. And it really makes it difficult for some of the better players out there, you know, who are genuine, helpful, pretty good at the game to try to escape out of that. And I'm going to be honest, getting level sevens across the board this week and getting my Mythic score past 2000, it was... Man, it was hard. It felt like the entire deck was stacked against me. I mean, you really got to think how many things are you rolling the dice on when you're going for lower level keys? You have player skill that could be completely random, their attitude and how they communicate with other people, whether they, you know, know the boss fights or not. And it seems like 
for a greater percentage than not, at least one or two of these things seem to be an issue in every single key. Way more rare than not, you get a good group that working together and you get that key done on time. The craziest thing is that when you start getting to the higher tier keys, you have a way higher chance of that happening. You start interacting with players who are very friendly, who are helpful, who are highly skilled and know what they're doing, who are understanding and, and you know, calm and explain things and are very patient, and normal and like, I don't know. And once you go to these lower level keys, it's just the complete opposite. You guys got to let me know about it in the comment section below. If you kind of understand what I'm saying here, if you sort of get what I'm putting out, I'm overall just looking for your experience and trying to understand what your thoughts are so far with the Mythic Plus sort of problem in Season 1 for The War Within. The last couple discussion points of today is actually about the Heronir race potentially becoming an allied race in the future and what you all think the chances of that actually happening are. Listen, I'm going to be honest. I also thought this race was going to come with the War Within launch, but sadly, they ended up not. Don't get me wrong, you know, I love the Earthen race, and I do really think they're cool. I just would have liked this race to be an option as well. Wowhead actually made an article about this not too long ago, and they explained that in the War Within dressing room, you can actually fully customize this race and go through, you know, all their customization options for male or female, like as you can see on screen here. I'm going to be honest. I think they look amazing, man. Uh, I, I really, really love it. To me, they look like kind of like a troll and a night elf combined with their aesthetic. And I find it really, really neat. I think this race would be absolutely awesome as like a shaman or a druid. But in general, they just look great in my opinion. I'm really, really hoping they bring this race out very soon to obtain maybe in a future patch or something like that throughout the war within. I'm sure they will. Lastly, if you didn't know, the U2's brand went on to create some exclusive vinyl figures of, uh, you know, some of the favorite characters here in the War Within so far, including Anduin, Thrall, and Illyria. I actually ordered all three of these bad boys. I'm going to be putting them up on the, you know, the shelf back there. This isn't sponsored at all, by all means, but if you guys are interested in purchasing some of these, you could check out the link below. Use the 10% discount code, help out the channel, get some cool stuff for your room. But listen, I just want to quickly state also that the War Within has been out for roughly a month, and I'm dying to hear your thoughts and opinions on all the features active in the game, man. Of course, I think there are some issues and some things that could be adjusted that I don't love, but there are a lot of really great things so far with the War Within, and I think it's shaping up to be a real solid expansion so far. Personally, my favorite things have got to be delves, uh, you know, crafting, as well as just the overall solo player experience being like 10 times better than ever before, you know? There are a lot of people out here who don't really have many friends or a guild to play with so you know i feel like them catering to that and the majority of people out there that don't have all that is a really big w but enough about me man i'm dying to hear you guys' thoughts about it in the comment section below i also want to thank you all so much for watching these videos we're pulling up on about a million views this month of september which is absolutely insane the channel hasn't done this good since like march of 2023 which is like a year and a half ago so it truly is a blessing to you know be having a community like you guys and all you know, the viewers and the fans and all that stuff to, you know, watch the content, enjoy it, like the videos and stuff. Thank you so, so much for watching. Really, I appreciate it. Until the very end, my name is Sky from the Comeback Kids. We got a lot more content coming soon. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Hey, hope you enjoyed the video. Listen, if you guys enjoyed the content, we have a ton of other videos to help you get through the war within, like these two right here. And since you're already here, do us a favor and hit that subscribe button to join the Comeback Kids family today because every subscriber matters. Thank you all so much for enjoying the video. I'll see you in the next one.